Yeah, what's good people? Nice to see you back again and I hope everybody had a great weekend. Really strange because two things, the clock went forward as you all know, that really caught me out yesterday, it caught out Bertram. He came an hour late for the show which was actually good because it took us an hour to sort out the audio and the video for last night's live podcast. So listen, that happened. After uh, my last few videos which were quite positive videos talking about the good things that have happened, We'll have a little bit of a mixed balance today. We'll talk about some of the... I haven't mentioned any numbers in the last two videos, but I think we might just kind of close that off now. And then we'll talk about some really good stories that are happening around the globe. We're now up to 730 infections worldwide. And I did, I did say roughly about this week, Wednesday, that we're probably going to hit a million. It definitely looks like we're on track to do that. Obviously, there's 35,000 dead. Now... If we're only at 730,000, that means we've still got a ways to go. So so if we got to a million then and it was 35,000 dead, then we could facilitate the 3.5%. But it looks like we're, the death rate is going to be well over 4%. Uh, again, remember, it started at 2.4, then 2.7, and then 3.4. And it looks like the death rate is getting higher and higher and higher. So that's something of a concern now because I've talked about we're yet to hit our peak. Based on those numbers, guys, one interesting thing came out, actually two interesting things came out of yesterday. The first one was in America, where they they have just, last few days, they've gone from 92,000 infected to 130,000. So there's been 40,000 cases just in the last few days. In America, it is blowing up. There's no doubt about that. But... It said because of the lack of testing, it said that there's possi there's a possibility that there's a million people that are currently infected. It's the same in the UK. It's possible that in the UK the numbers are close to half a million or maybe even more. And um, look, look what happened to Germany yesterday. Um, Germany had about 4,700 cases and just in a day, this is just through sheer testing, they've gone from 4,700 cases to 57,000. Now, that's simply just because you're being able to test more. And if you can test more, like we talked about that's happening in South Korea, then you can actually not only be able to lock down those people who are ill, but then you'll be able to stop the uh, fruitation of the virus. You'll be able to hold those people, lock them down, and stop the virus from going anywhere. Because those people who maybe didn't think that they were infected would have gone out and infected more people. If you, if you just lock those people down, then you're just stopping it. You're cutting it off from the neck and you're stopping it from going anywhere. And that's the reason why we're having rates really slow down massively in Korea because of that, just that one thing. And I think that the one when we looked at America and we looked at the UK, the biggest difference in those countries compared to the other countries was the lack of testing. There was just a complete lack of testing in England and in the USA. And uh, we're talking about per capita as well. So we're not talking about the number of tests that are given. We're talking about number of tests versus the population. Because it's nice to say for America to say, oh, yeah, we've, uh, we've tested more than any other country. But, bro, most countries have about 70 to 60 to 70 million. And you have 330. So if you've done 400,000 tests and South Korea's done 400,000 tests, it really doesn't mean you've done more tests than them because per capita, they've done four or five tests more than you have. Let's talk about Boris Johnson. Mr. Boris Johnson, by the way, Prince Charles has come out of isolation today, so that's some good news. Remember Boris Johnson's campaign promise where he said he was going to create 50,000 new NHS nurses and doctors? Well, he publicly admitted that only 31,000 of those 50,000s were actually new recruits. People currently in year one and year two. And listen, l l let's be honest. Those nurses in year three and four have been shoved into the fire. They're having crash course cases on how to operate ventilators and everything uh, currently right now. So, so that's just what's happening in this current state. But remember last week we, we heard that all the retired NHS workers were being contacted? Well, the official number of the amount that's come back is about 20,000. So that's a lot. And, and look, look, let's just, just hope that this helps. Let's just hope that it carries forward and then we can able to, to get more nurses in there and fit them with the right equipment in order for them to do their job.
There's been a massive breakthrough in technology from the Mercedes Formula One team and the University College Engineers, which work with the UCLH. Uh, they have built a device which delivers oxygen into the lungs without needing a ventilator. And so it's like a CPAP machine, you know, for that premature babies use in order to help them to breathe. Now, um, obviously China and Italy use them as well on the patients, but 40 of these devices were built over the, uh, over the weekend and delivered to the ULCH and also to three other London hospitals. And that's for trialing. So if the trials go well, over a thousand of these CPAP machines can be produced per day by Mercedes AMG. And listen, that is huge, massive. Remember yesterday in the live podcast, I talked about for a pandemic, the UK, according to the government, was supposed to have 30,000 ventilators installed ready for a pandemic. It turns out that the UK only had 8,000. That's less than a third needed to deal with a global pandemic. So it just goes to show you how much we are struggling right now as far as having the ability to deal with this goes. We really have been unprepared. And listen, big shout out to Mercedes. And we have to remember, guys, Formula One is the pinnacle of technology when it comes to engineering. That it's great that their engineers have, been, have helped to facilitate them to build something like this and it just sends a message to show that everybody should be doing their part look it's like i remember when um obama became president and the first thing he said is i need you to help me to be leaders and to change and that's what happened from the streets to urban areas from wall street everywhere else to the banks we need everybody to come together to help get rid of this virus and overcome it and get back to some normality and i think this is a great sign from mercedes and as i said we've got a plethora of, of people in terms of uh, dyson and tesla that are also helping the governments to with various different things around the globe so this is just more good news and it's really great to hear all of that so listen now that's all sorted let's focus on the sporting world now look in the live podcast, we talk. This is going to be something which not every fan is going to agree. Not every fan's going to have the same opinion. And and look, Liverpool have been a class of the league, and Norwich have been the worst in the league. And you're never going to find a balance. Yeah, Liverpool have had an outstanding season. It's a shame they'll probably be awarded the title on the grounds of probability. But I think that this is something that we need to discuss. There's no ideal situation, guys, for, for this to be reasonably fair for everybody. We're in unique times and it's not all about Liverpool. There's 19 other clubs in the league. And remember when I talked about 2008, 2014, when Arsenal ran away with the league only to falter by the wayside. They led the league for about 75% of the season in both campaigns and they just choked. Yeah, so this is an argument for us to finish the season, and and we got to be honest about it. So I've got three instances where we can do that. Yeah, I threw this up against the panel. It's a little bit different now because the FA are looming over having you know in their meeting on the thirtieth of April. They're going to be having a meeting to talk about, look, guys, I know we said that football might return. I know we said that certain things are going to happen, but we have to face the reality that. As the government said, this thing can go three to six months. So listen, we're in it for the long haul. We might go for the next six months, guys, and we'll still be into this position. I'm not saying we will. I'm saying for the government to say three to six months, there's a strong possibility. I always said that this is going to be three months minimum, that we're all going to be locked in, locked down, be at home, and try to stop this thing from spreading. I said three months is the sweet spot. That, to me, seems realistic in terms of, having the time to identify who's got it, having the time to identify whoever does have it, allowing them to heal from it and, and recover from the virus so they won't be spreading it anymore. That's going to take a minimum for me of 12 weeks. So for me, this is nothing new and there's nothing to panic about. And uh, this is just us being real. And the government, in fairness, I did say the government were trying to hide. They, they weren't trying to scare the people. And I have to give them credit over the last few days They've kind of trickled in possibilities that things may or may not happen. They came out with the fact that we've got a thousand dead right now. And if we limit it to 20,000 dead, then we'd have done all right. That's what they came out with yesterday. And really, guys, that's just them communicating realism to us, which is what we want. Look, we might not like it. 
and there might be some people who can't deal with the news very well but it's nice to hear that the government is actually being realistic in their terms. They've come out and said they, there could be 20,000 deaths in the UK and they've come out and said this thing may last between three to six months. Thank you very much for being honest yeah, and thank you very much for being real because that's what we need. We need to understand the, the depth of this issue right now and how we're going to deal with it. The FA have changed their thought pattern and the FA have basically said, look guys, we could be going into September. <laughs> we could be going into August, September and still not play any football. Realistically, that's how bad this thing can get. So the season might be voided. And I'm, I say might be, but I, overall, look, there's some better ways to do this. So ha let's have a look at it. So option one, guys, is to take the form of each team over their last 10 matches. Remember, Arsenal's still the only team in Europe that's unbeaten. Yeah. And project it into the final f matches to determine the champions of relegation, etc. And as I said, are we going to come out of that looking good? Yeah. Because Arsenal ain't been beaten. So Arsenal will come out of that looking sweet. But anyway, I'm not going to focus on that too much. My option number two is to finish the season when they can. Have a two-week break and then start the following season. Yeah, And I don't think that that is kind of realistic, to be honest, because we don't know when we're going to start. So it's impossible to wait as long as you can and then play a full season next season. So here's my best option. Here's my number one option. My number one option, option three, is to shorten next season yeah, with teams playing each other just once. Yeah, no home and away games, just filter it out as best as you can so it's fair for everybody. So uh, when we play Liverpool, are we going to do that at the Emirates or Anfield? Yeah, we don't have a good record at Anfield, but we have a decent record at the Emirates. Yeah, I remember we played, we draw them one all last season at the Emirates. And I remember when they came to the Emirates a few years ago and we beat Liverpool 4-1. So um, the results at Anfield are completely different uh, with Arsenal. We, we get battered over there. We get absolutely battered. So I don't think, I think that's the only thing that you've got to, to figure out. Manchester City against Liverpool. Is that going to be at the Etihad? Or, and that's the problem that they're going to have. But it's a fair thing. And maybe it could just be done with a toss of a coin. I don't know. Yeah. But look, not everybody's going to be happy with these rules. Believe me. But I think shortening next season is going to be the best way to do it. And, and as I said, they can draw that out of a bag like they do with Europa, Champions League and, and everything like that and the FA Cup. And yeah, also, another great idea that came from one of my mates on Xbox, Rids, Riddles, you know who you are, Call of Duty Destiny, head topping brother. Yeah, he made up to the idea of actually getting the teams to play in neutral grounds. So I think that is a brilliant idea. You know, imagine Twickenham, Millennium Stadium teams go and play in that Wembley Stadium I think that would be an excellent idea that way there's no advantage and then we can have half a season 19 games that is a brilliant idea well done Rids for that football's never really been about fairness in that way it's always been about the rules it's just have a goodwill gesture where all premiership clubs should donate 10 million to a central fund to be redistributed equally to the other clubs around the English top seven leagues. And this would be a kitty of 200 million. And what it would do is it will help these clubs to keep afloat. Because look, I talked about premiership clubs taking pay cuts and things like that. And, and, and it's going to happen. Yeah, Salaries are going to get cut, whether it's 10%, 20% or whatever. And teams are going to have to cool down on their structures because at some point, sponsorship money is going to be pulled. TV money is going to be pulled. Everyone's going to cut back on costs because you don't really want to pay for something that you haven't had. Yeah, nobody does. So I think it's only fairness in that way that we have to look at it now and prepare a plan. Get a, a fund, get a kitty of money so that the likes of Port Vale, Berry. Uh, Doncaster, all them other uh, teams in the lower divisions don't fold because this is what's going to happen. There's no money at the moment that's that's being circulated and teams will go down. Some teams are struggling to stay afloat as it was. So in order for us to protect the game, let's get a, a kitty of 200 million and redistribute it among the seven leagues so that we can save our football. That's some good ideas that I'm just putting forward towards you guys. I would like to know from you guys what you think 
and what would your plan be in order to save the sport and, uh, and again big well done to Mercedes let's hear something coming up from Red Bull Ferrari let, let's see what those teams are going to come up with um, because it would be nice to see other teams chipping in and helping us deal with this because it's a global pandemic guys it's not something that is localized and it's not something that just one country is suffering with we're all in this together and we all have to pull our weight so listen that's it from me guys i hope you enjoy the content i really do i'm trying hard there to just make things new get things fresh think of new ideas new topics and uh you know it's a challenge to make it every day as fun as it can be but listen thanks for your support as always hold it down look after yourselves hug Call your family and share the love, guys, and keep in contact with each other. Get on WhatsApp. Don't press the phone. Press the video phone and speak to somebody face-to-face, -face and let's make it real. Peace out. Nice one. Right back at ya.